Good morning and welcome to 101010 at Poets House, the poetry library in downtown New York City. Poets House is the place for poetry, poets, and all things verse. I'm Dave Johnson, poet and playwright and your host of 101010, where we invite you at 10 a.m. on weekdays for 10 minutes to write a new poem. And in 10 days, you'll have 10 new poems. Good morning. Today on 101010, we are looking at the poems of Pablo Neruda, specifically from a book he has called The Book of Questions. Now, The Book of Questions is exactly what it sounds like. Each line of the entire poem, it's a, one poem, basically, that runs the entire length of the book. It's about, uh, oh, about a, I don't know, about a 60-page book here. But each line is a new question. And in these questions, uh, he's really attempting to create a question that creates another question without trying to find the answers. The idea is that the question keeps the dialogue going as opposed to saying asking a question and looking or stopping to look for the answer. He looks for the next question and the questions then multiply on themselves and become more deep and profound as we go. So I've selected just a, a few of the questions to get us started this morning on a question poem from the book of questions Pablo Neruda whom can I ask what I came to make happen in this world? Why do I move without wanting to? Why am I not able to sit still? Why do I go rolling without wheels, flying without wings or feathers? Why did I decide to migrate if my bones still live in Chile? Why do leaves commit suicide when they feel yellow? When the convict ponders the light, is that the same light that shines on you? Where can you find a bell that will ring in your dreams? Does the earth sing like a cricket in the music of the heavens? And at whom does rice smile with infinitely many white teeth? What did the tree learn from the earth to be able to speak with the sky? From the book of questions, right? So many odd questions. I want you to think about it for a second. I'm going to read it through one more time. And as we read it through, I want you to think about which question of these do you find the most compelling, right? I like to think about that. Whom can I ask what I came to make happen in this world? Why do I move without wanting to? Why am I not able to sit still? Why do I go rolling without wheels, flying without wings or feathers? Why did I decide to migrate if my bones still live in Chile? Why do leaves commit suicide when they feel yellow? When the convict ponders the light, is it the same light that shines on you? Where can you find a bell that will ring in your dreams? Does the earth sing like a cricket in the music of the heavens? And at whom does rice smile with infinitely many white teeth? What did the tree learn from the earth to be able to speak with the sky? Hmm, which one do you find the most compelling? One that I've always found compelling is, and at whom does rice smile with infinitely many white teeth? I always just imagine, within so many of the lines of Neruda, is so full of image. I imagine in this one a bowl full of rice, right? And, of course, the rice, in this sense, become teeth. It's, it's really odd, strange, and, and really compelling to think about. Why do leaves commit suicide when they feel yellow, right? I mean, when they're committing suicide, the idea that Leaves committing suicide. What do you what do you think they may be doing, right? Yeah, they probably leaping from the tree, right? I mean, it's the fall of the year, right? The dying away, right? It's a really compelling idea. But he doesn't stop to answer the question, right? He just keeps on going. He's a poet who wrote, of course, originally in Spanish, and he did migrate from Chile, right? In a time when it was a very difficult time in their history. And that, that question has always been very compelling to me, too. Why did I decide to migrate if my bones still live in Chile, right? Very compelling. What I'm going to ask you to do today is to write your very own question poem. I'm going to say at least five lines. It could be longer, right? But you got 10 minutes to create this poem this morning, right? And I want you to write a question poem. Don't stop to answer them. And they don't have to have any answers. It can be anything. And remember, a question can start with why, where, how, when, if, right? Anything can start a question. And I would say this, probably the more odd, 
the more unanswerable the question is, the more compelling your poem's going to be. So give it a shot this morning, okay? I'm going to go over to the board. We're going to give it a shot, too. We'll see what we come up with. Okay, now we're going to take a shot at writing our poem of questions, similar to the way that uh, Naruto wrote his book of questions, right? And remember, a question can start with the why, when, how, where, is, if, was, whatever you want it to be. And remember that when you're asking these questions, you're not trying to answer them. You are trying to dig deeper in the dialogue so that one question leads to the next question, leads to the next question, and every question uh, essentially lead you to a more profound moment. And that's what you're really looking for. And you want to, uh, to just let it go wherever it wants to go. So I'm going to give it start this morning, and let's see what we can do. I'm going to say um, uh, do. I'm going to start with the word do. I like do. Something offbeat a little bit. Do birds dream of being oranges? Now, I can't answer that question. That's strange, bizarre. Who knows if they dream of being oranges? But I, I like that, right? It's a sort of odd thing, right? Do birds dream of being oranges? Um, what's next? Uh, if a boat could marry the sea would it lose its anchors if a boat could marry the sea would it lose its anchors right, again I have no idea what that means right but we'll go with it and see where it goes uh, let me give you one more let's just keep this thing moving here it said um, I will try what. What um, is the average life mm, of a pencil sharpener? Wow, it's very strange. I have no earthly idea what any of these have in common, or if they even do. What is the average life of a pencil sharpener, right? So let's just see what I've got so far. Do birds dream of being oranges? If a boat could marry the sea, would it lose its anchors? What is the average life of a pencil sharpener, right? So it's just going wherever it wants to go. You know, I, I have no idea if birds and dreaming and oranges, and if the boat and getting married to the sea and anchors has anything to do with the average life of pencil sharpeners. But it's odd, it's strange, and I really like it, right? And that's the key, right? You're just trying to go further and further and deeper and deeper. So I'm going to finish my poem, and I want you to write a poem, again, of questions. You can do five to ten questions, whatever, wherever you feels like you've written it till you have said what you want to say, right? And when you get your poem of questions, give it a title and share it with us at the address on the screen. If you'd like to learn more and read more of Pablo Neruda's work, we have many books here in the Poets House Library on Pablo Neruda. He wrote uh, from uh, about 1920 until his death in the early 80s. He was uh, a poet who, of course, won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and he wrote many poems that really were about uh, social justice and freedom. Some of his poems really uh, were known for, of course, romantic and love poems, as we said, the uh, Book of Questions, 
and he also had an incredible series of odes. He really transformed that form. Uh, before he wrote those poems, a lot of the odes which came down from the Greeks, that form, uh, were known as odes to the heavenly bodies and odes to the gods, and he really changed that. He wrote a book of poems called Odes to Ordinary Things, and one of his odes that he wrote was an ode to his cat. He wrote Ode to Oranges, Ode to a Watermelon, and one of my very favorites that I'm going to read for you today is called Ode to My Socks. And these socks were very special, and you're going to hear why they were so special. Of course, they were originally written in Spanish. I'm going to read it to you in English. Oda a los calcetines, or Ode to My Socks. Maru Mari brought me a pair of socks, which she knitted herself with her sheep herder's hands. Two socks as soft as rabbits, I slipped my feet into them as though into two cases knitted with threads of twilight and goat skin. Violent socks. My feet were two fish made of wool, two long sharks, sea blue, shot through by one golden thread, two immense blackbirds, two cannons. My feet were honored in this way by these heavenly socks. They were so handsome. For the first time, my feet seemed to me unacceptable, like two decrepit firemen, firemen unworthy of that woven fire of those glowing socks. Nevertheless, I resisted the sharp temptation to save them somewhere as schoolboys keep fireflies, as learned men collect sacred texts. I resisted the mad impulse to put them into a golden cage and each day give them bird seed and pieces of pink melon. Like explorers in the jungle who hand over the very rare green deer to the spit and eat it with remorse. I stretched out my feet and pulled on the magnificent socks and then my shoes. The moral of my ode is this. Beauty is twice beauty, and what is good is doubly good when it is a matter of two socks made of wool in winter. Pablo Neruda. This translation is from Robert Bly, and it's available here at Poet's House. We'll see you next time on 101010 right here at Poet's House.